Okay, we have here something interesting today. We have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x squared times cosine x dx. Okay, to get started with this, the really interesting part, so you'll notice this first thing here, e to the minus x squared. This is, if this was all we had, this here is actually the Gaussian integral, which I'm spelling wrong, but we have the bounds. And then if we, just, if we get rid of the cosine, we know the value of this is square root of pi over two. But the trouble is, how are we going to handle this integral with cosine x? It's not like I can just do like a u substitution that's going to make that go away. So the cosine x here, this is going to be the real problem. So what I want to try to do for this is actually use Feynman's technique. What we want to do is kind of create a parameter, a second variable, because we're integrating with respect to x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this variable. I'll just kind of multiply in a t right there. And we'll call this whole thing f of t. And then just to be clear that we're not changing anything, the way it works is if we just say, we'll just set t equal to one. That way for f of one, this is gonna be exactly the same as our goal expression. But now we're just gonna need a value for t where we're gonna be able to evaluate this. And that brings us back to the Gaussian integral again. You'll just notice if t equals zero, then cosine of zero, that's just one. And so that does go away for that one case when t equals zero. So when we have f of zero, what we're left with is exactly the Gaussian integral, right? And so now we can use that value, that this is just the square root of pi over two. And so later on, we'll use this, that we know f of zero is just gonna be square root of pi over two. But now continuing from here, what I wanna do is now we're gonna to try to take a derivative on this, derivative of our function. So what we wanna find is f prime of t. And when we do that, we're gonna take a derivative on the right side, but we need to take a derivative with respect to t. But now from here, what we need is we need a way to differentiate this whole thing with respect to t. That's where we use Feynman's trick, because what we're going to want to do is differentiate here inside the integral, but we'll do it, we'll write this as a partial. So we're, we're looking for a partial derivative with respect to t of this expression right here. So now going ahead with this derivative here, what's going to happen? This, this piece right here, everything's in terms of x, we're differentiating with respect to t. So this part's just a constant that I can bring out front here then derivative here of cosine tx, that's gonna be minus sine tx, but then we need the chain rule here. Derivative of t times x with respect to t, that's just gonna be x. So I'll take this x, I'll, I'll just write this x over here, and actually let's move the minus sign and put it with the x. And then now we can integrate this thing with respect to x. So what I wanna do for this is use integration by parts using the di method. I'm gonna group this x with the e minus x squared together, because that's gonna allow us to integrate this and we'll differentiate this part. So let's see how it goes. We'll differentiate sine tx with respect to x again. And this is gonna be minus x, e minus x squared here. Let's just take this derivative. This is gonna become cosine tx times t. And now here, let's just do this integral off to the side just to see, just to make it really clear what's happening. So we have the integral of minus x, e minus x squared. I'm gonna do a u substitution for this. So we'll say u, it's gonna be equal to minus x squared. Then our du is gonna be minus two x dx. I can make this work just multiplying a two right here. So this is gonna become minus two x. I'll multiply by a half out front so we're not changing it. And now I'm just gonna kinda of do this on the fly. So again, this piece here is our du and then we have just eu. So we integrate that, we're gonna get back half E u, and what I'll do is I'll just write that in here. So I'll write this as half e minus x squared, where again, x squared is our u. So now part of the solution is right here on the diagonal. So we'll put that down. We'll write this sine tx e minus x squared. I'll write it all over two. And then for this here, now t is gonna be a constant value. Half, of course, is a constant value. So what just happened is Everything outside the constant value, this is actually just our f of t, our original problem. So what I can do, come back here, this is gonna be evaluated from zero to infinity, sorry, let me write that in. And then here I'll bring the minus t over two in front, but then all this stuff is just gonna be f of t. And then back here trying to evaluate this, you'll notice when this is going to infinity, because we've got the exponential, e to the minus infinity, that first part's going to zero. But then for the second part, when you plug zero in, this part's one, but sine at zero is zero, so actually this whole first part's going away to zero. And so just to be clear what's happening here, this is our f prime of t. I know it's getting kind of messy, but what we're saying is our f prime of t value is gonna be equal to just this part. 
And so what we need to, what we have here is a little differential equation, a separable differential equation. If we solve this, then we're gonna have our f of t value. So let's clean up the board and just solve this thing. Okay, so here we have our separable differential equation. What we wanna do is we wanna solve for this f of t that's getting us back to our goal here. But for a separable differential equation, we don't really like this notation that much. So what I'm gonna do is, let's give another label. Let's call this f of t thing y. So then what that's gonna let me do is I can kind of rewrite this whole equation. For the derivative, I can write this as dy dt. And then here we'll have minus t over two, and this will just become y. But now from here, we just need to separate the variables, get all the y stuff on one side, all the t stuff on one side. And in this case, we're allowed to treat the derivative like a fraction. So what I'll do is I'll divide by a y to get this left side as dy over y, then kind of multiplying by dt, getting the dt on the right side, we have minus t over two dt. Go ahead, integrate on both sides. Integral here is just gonna be natural log of y. I'll ignore the plus c on this side, but we'll keep it on this other side then this integral is gonna be minus t squared over four plus c. We'll rearrange this as y equal to e to the minus t squared over four. But for the plus c, I can split this out because it's in the exponent, I can write this as e to the c. But e to the c is just some constant. So let's get rid of that and just write this as a constant in front. And then just coming back here, remember y is just our f of t value. Okay, so we have our f, we have an expression for f of t, but we don't really want this constant here. Well, what I can do is come back, come back right here. We have at the beginning, we found that we know that f of zero is gonna be just, if just becomes the Gaussian integral, it's just gonna become square root of pi over two. So we can look at that, f of zero, then plugging in a zero here, we're gonna have c, this is gonna become e to the zero, or just one, and we're saying this is gonna be equal to square root of pi over four. So that's gonna give me a value for this constant. So coming back here for our f of t value, let's just write this up. This is gonna be square root of pi, over four times this e minus t squared over four. But now just going back to the beginning, remember what we're trying to do, we have our f of t, but we were trying to evaluate this when t equals one. So what we need to do here is we just need to find a value for f of one, plugging that in, we have square root of pi over two. Here, plugging the one in here, this is gonna become e minus one over four. And maybe I'll just try to rearrange it and make it look pretty. So what I want to do is bring it all under one square root. So we'll have square root of pi. Then this two, bring it inside the square root. I'll write this as a four. And then if I take this e minus one four, bring it into the denominator. We're under the square root, but we want one four. So I can write this as square root of e. And that's it. Okay, there you have it. Integral with Feynman's trick. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.